I'm going well on shell, shell, shell. Oh, what a day! I'm on my way. I can be sure of shell. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going well. I'm going shell. You can be sure of shell. The visionary entrepreneur, Marcus Samuel, was instrumental in determining the course of the Shell Company's history. Born in 1853 into a family well-versed in trade, Samuel assumed leadership of his father's import-export company in London. But he was also a visionary and a sharp businessman, and he looked for fresh chances, especially in the oil sector. Marcus Samuel saw the promise of the oil trade in the late 19th century as the world was switching from coal to oil as its main energy source. The rising demand for paraffin, a substance made from crude oil and increasingly utilized for lighting, presented him with an opportunity to profit. Samuel entered the oil industry and founded the corporation that would eventually become Shell thanks to his strategic vision. Before diving into the video, Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content, from seashell to shell. In order to keep up with the demand for exotic decor, a London antique merchant started importing seashells from the Far East about 200 years ago. Marcus Samuel's business venture established the groundwork for his sons, Sam and Marcus Jr., to subsequently manage a successful import-export company. With its abundant supplies of premium oil, an advantageous natural harbor, Baku, Russia, was the center of the oil industry at the time, with the majority of its uses being in lights and lubricants. The introduction of internal combustion engines in 1886 caused a sharp increase in the market for transportation fuel. The Samuel brothers, capitalizing on their experience in shipping, ordered a fleet of steamers to transport large amounts of oil. With the inaugural voyage of their first tanker, Murex, they changed the transportation of oil. In the first tanker to cross the Suez Canal was Murex in 1892. In 1897, the business owned by the brothers was renamed the Shell Transport and Trading Company. Its logo was a muscle shell. Shell Transport came into touch with Royal Dutch Petroleum as a result of its operations in the East and its quest for alternative energy supplies to lessen its reliance on Russia. In 1903, the two businesses came together to defend themselves against Standard Oil's hegemony. In 1907, they completely amalgamated to form the Royal Dutch Shell Group. The scallop shell, often known as pectin, is the new emblem used by Shell. Shell produced 11% of the world's petroleum, and owned 10% of the industry by the end of the 1920s, making it the largest oil business in the world. Switching coal to oil, the visionary entrepreneur Marcus Samuel was instrumental in determining the course of the Shell Company's history. Born in 1853 into a family well-versed in trade, Samuel assumed leadership of his father's import-export company in London. But he was also a visionary and a sharp businessman and he looked for fresh chances, especially in the oil sector. Marcus Samuel saw the promise of the oil trade in the late 19th century as the world was switching from coal to oil as its main energy source. The rising demand for kerosene, a substance made from crude oil and increasingly utilized for lighting, presented him with an opportunity to profit. Samuel entered the oil industry and founded the corporation that would eventually become Shell thanks to his strategic vision. The Shell Transport and Trading Corporation, founded by Marcus Samuel in 1897, has a long history with the corporation. With his creative thinking, Samuel went beyond conventional trade and accepted the difficulties involved in moving oil across seas. The unique seashell emblem that Marcus Samuel used to identify his kerosene shipments is where the company's moniker, Shell, came from. This iconic shell would go on to rank among the most well-known images in the world of international commerce. Name of this new gasoline. Shell Super Regular. Designed to give your car better protection against engine knock than the average or ordinary regular. You may never settle for ordinary regular again. First Decade of 20th Century 
The Marcus firm saw substantial improvements in the first decades of the 20th century. Marcus Samuel anticipated that in order to meet the growing demand for petroleum products, it would be crucial to secure a consistent supply of crude oil. Due to this foresight, discussions and agreements with the Dutch oil giant, Royal Dutch Petroleum Giant, resulted in the formation of the Royal Dutch Shell Group in 1907. Shell's efforts to find and extract oil from new sources demonstrated its dedication to innovation. The corporation was a trailblazer in the exploration and exploitation of oil reserves in the Middle East and the East Indies. Shell's commitment to overcoming logistical issues in the oil sector was demonstrated by the building of the first oil tanker, the Murex in 1892, and the later establishment of the Oil Transport Company in 1897. Second decade of 20th century, they kept developing and adapting to the shifting dynamics of the world energy scene during the 20th century. The business expanded its activities to include exploration, refining, and marketing, in addition to other facets of the oil and gas sector. As the influence of the oil and gas industry on the environment became more widely recognized, Shell's dedication to sustainability and environmental responsibility became more important in its corporate philosophy. Middle of 20th Century Middle of the 20th century presented both chances and challenges. Following World War II, economies began to rebuild and energy consumption skyrocketed. Shell established itself as a major participant in satisfying this need by growing its business internationally. However, the industry faced serious difficulties as a result of the oil shocks of the 1970s, which were brought on by geopolitical events. Late 20th and early 21st centuries In the business sector, sustainability and corporate social responsibility had a resurgence in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Shell welcomed this paradigm shift, led by CEOs such as Peter Vozer and Jeroen van der Veer. The corporation aggressively looked for ways to lessen its environmental impact and invested in renewable energy projects, including solar and wind farms. These initiatives were in keeping with the need for sustainable business operations and the rising worldwide awareness of climate change. Shell has encountered difficulties recently as a result of the shift to a low-carbon economy. The narrative of Marcus Samuel and Shell is one of foresight, inventiveness, and flexibility. Shell's history bears witness to the enduring legacy of a firm that has changed the way the world meets its energy demands, even as it continues to negotiate the difficulties of the 21st century energy landscape. If you find this video interesting, please subscribe.